All right, welcome back to the video. Today we're taking a look at an integral um, where we have a polynomial in the numerator, a polynomial in the denominator, and the degree of the numerator is greater than the degree of the denominator, <clears throat> which makes me think automatically. There's no special pattern that I can see here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a division. I'm gonna divide the denominator into the numerator using long division. So what I'm gonna do is just say, well, x cubed plus x squared minus 2x. If I divide that into the quartic, x to the 4 plus, well, you know what I'll do? I'll even put some extra powers in. So 0x cubed plus 0x uh, squared plus 2x plus 6. Just so I've got some space to do my division. x cubed goes into x to the 4 x times, so I'll put an x right here x times this is x to the 4, x times that is x cubed, x times negative 2x is negative 2x squared. I'm going to do a takeaway, so subtract, subtract, add, add vertically, I'm going to get a negative x cubed plus 2x squared. And then I continue with this process. So x cubed goes into negative x cubed negative 1 times, negative 1 times x cubed is negative x cubed, Negative 1 times x squared is uh, negative x squared, and negative 1 times negative 2x is positive 2x. Draw the line, change those signs, add vertically, and we're going to get a 3x squared minus um, 2x. Oh, be careful. i got to add the 2x. <laughs> so there is no 2x. It cancelled. Just be careful when you're doing long division, if you have three terms in the divisor, drop an extra term. So I'm going to drop the 6 plus 6. Now I know I'm done because the degree of this is greater than the degree of this. When the remainder has a degree less than the divisor, you're essentially done. So what I could do is rewrite this as, well, the integral of the quotient, which is x minus 1 dx plus... And this is just using the division statement, right? So I've got the quotient um, and then the remainder divided by the divisor. So take the remainder, which is um, 3x squared plus 6 all over the divisor, which is x cubed plus x squared minus 2x the dx. Okay, this is easy to take the integral of. This one I'm noticing... I could try to use a u substitution, but it's not going to work. I can see it's not going to work. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to create some partial fractions here. So the reason why is because the denominator is factorable. So if I can take, notice I can take an x out. If I take the x out, I'm left with what? x squared plus x minus 2. And then, well, that's equal to x times Two numbers at times to give negative 2 and add to give positive 1 are going to be positive 2 and minus 1. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to break that up to get into my lawn space, my natural log space. So I'm going to say uh, 3x squared plus 6 over the denominator in question, which is x cubed plus x squared minus 2x is equal to... I'm going to take each of these, these factors and use them as denominators because they had to come together to build this ultimate fraction. So I'm going to say a over x plus b over x plus 2 plus c over x minus 1. Sorry, I forgot to put the x minus 1 there. Have you seen this method before? It's actually very helpful for integration. So what I could do is multiply through by the denominator and that's going to leave um, 3x squared plus 6 on the left hand side and then I'm going to well if I multiply by by these factors you're going to notice that I drop the x and I'm left with these two here so I get a times x plus 2 times x minus 1 and then for the b, the x plus 2 is going to cancel, leaving the x and the x minus 1. So that's going to be plus b times x 
times x minus 1 plus c times x times x plus 2. Okay, well how can I use that? Well, what I could do is sort of group my powers. Do you see? So I'm going to expand this out a little bit. So on the right hand side, that's going to produce a times x squared plus x minus 2. And then here I'm going to get b bracket x squared minus x. And then here c times x squared plus 2x. Okay, so now notice that I have an a associated with the x squared, a b associated with the x squared, a c associated with the x squared, meaning I'm just going to group my powers. So I've got an a plus b plus c multiplied by x squared. And then look at my linear terms. I've got a positive 1 with the a, a negative 1 with the b, and a positive 2 with the c. So I can combine those as a minus b plus 2c times x. Okay. Uh, all I've done is I've expanded the a, b, c through and then group my terms, group my, my powers. And then I have one constant term associated with a. So that's going to be negative 2a. So don't forget, that's going to be equivalent to 3x squared plus 0x plus 6. So I'm really just using the uh, equating my coefficients, right? And so what does that imply? Well, that implies that a plus b plus c equals 3 and a minus b plus 2c equals 0 and negative 2a equals 6. So what I think I will do, if you don't mind, is I'm going to use some board space right here. So I'll get rid of this and I'm also going to get rid of that and see if this helps. Okay, so this tells me that a plus b plus c is equal to 3 and also a minus b plus 2c equals 0 and negative 2a equals 6. Well, you can see here we know what a is, right? Because if negative 2a is equal to 6, then that means that this implies here that a is equal to negative 3, which produces a 2 by 2 um, system. So if I put negative 3 where the a is, this is going to be negative 3. This is going to be negative 3. And that's going to produce b plus c. I'm going to use these two equations. I'm just back substituting. Um, is going to be equal to 6. If I bring the negative 3 over, it becomes 3 plus 3. And then I've got a negative b plus 2c equals 3. And that's so nice because, look, these are opposites. So I could just add vertically and eliminate the b's, giving me 3c equals 9, or c is equal to 3. So now I know what c is, I know what a is, and I think I can figure out what b is, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to erase this mess here, okay? I don't need it anymore. So I'm going to get rid of this right here. If I had a bigger board, then I'd leave it on, but I don't because I'm home for the summer <laughs> and this is all we have for the summer. Okay, so I can find b. Well, I could just use any of these equations. So if b plus c is equal to 6, um, that means b plus 3 is equal to 6. So b, my friend, is also 3. So this is kind of nice because now look, I, ha I can break up this, this integrand into partial fractions. So let's bring this down here where we left off. And I'm just going to rewrite the first part. We'll do the, all the integrals together. So x minus 1 um, dx plus, now watch what I do. Instead of writing all of this, I'm going to put my ABC in. And look, at these are set up to be natural logs when you integrate. How nice is that? So my A is negative 3, so negative 3 over x plus 3 over x plus 2, b turned out to be 3, and so did c. So 3 over x minus 1, don't forget your dx, your teacher will get upset. 
You have to have a DX, remember, because if you have an integral, the integral symbol with the DX are like bookends. They have to go together. Okay, it's very hot in this apartment right now. <laughs> okay, so here I'm gonna, now I'm gonna integrate, help me. So what's the antiderivative of X? You know what it is, it's X to the two divided by two. You just add one to the exponent and divide by the exponent. Minus the integral of one, which is X. That one's pretty easy. Okay, now here, um, the minus, well the minus three doesn't, it doesn't matter. So I'm just gonna say minus three, I'm left with a one over X. Well, that's the natural log, the natural log of the absolute value of X. The integral of one over X is the natural log of the absolute value of X. Plus three times the natural log of X plus two. So the integral of one over X plus two is the natural log of X plus two. Plus three, times, uh-oh, my b is getting in the way. Let me do, we don't need these anymore. Let me get rid of that. Three times the natural log of x minus one plus c. There it is, there it is my friends, there's the answer. You could get fancy with your logs if you wanted to, but I'm just gonna leave it like that for now. And um, that is one way to crack uh, integral when you have a numerator that is a degree higher than the denominator using long division. There's actually another way to do it. It's easier, a little bit faster, but um, I figured that long division is something that most people know, so I applied that. And then using partial fractions to break up this one too. All right, if you like the video today, don't forget to slap a like on it. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you right back here in the next video.